Good morning. Here we are. Middle of Looney Town. <clears throat> I uh, need to take a fast from all the news, that's for certain. Crazy days we're living in today, isn't it? <clears throat> so, anyway, glad you guys are on here uh, this morning. I did see that our new president did uh, write into executive order that uh, men are competing in all of the women's sports. Um, use whatever restroom stuff you know so I also saw that and I don't know if you guys saw that where he they also moved all of the National Guard <clears throat> into the parking garages and so <clears throat> I don't know how much of it is true or not but one outlet and one bathroom for 5,000 troops uh, and I do see that uh, Abbott governor of uh, Texas uh, called his National Guard back so come on home guys so anyway <clears throat> um, definitely some crazy immoral days uh, that we're living in but that's okay we uh, <clears throat> we know that God's got things under control you know it it uh, it is a little disheartening though <clears throat> when you see all of that going on and uh, truly just a sad day for our country to, to see such hatred uh, and such immorality. But anyway, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. <clears throat> but I, I was reading in uh, Genesis this morning. So before we do that too, uh, <clears throat> Kosha Ricker is usually on here, not on here. Uh, you pray for Kosha. Her dad passed away this morning. It was just a few months ago that her grandmother passed away and uh, her mom passed away when she was young and so uh, she lost her mom a long time ago and then she lost her grandma who helped raise her and now she's lost her dad so I would ask that you uh, pray for her <clears throat> if you would pray for the Rickers Nathan and Kosha and all of her family and uh, during this time um, I'm not sure yet I'm kind of hearing some rumors that uh, <clears throat> they may be asking uh, me to do that funeral for uh, <clears throat> for the groom's family, uh, their daughter and uh, little baby um, were killed. And so not sure yet. I'm just kind of hearing some rumors on that. So <clears throat> I would ask that you uh, pray for that. And uh, <clears throat> if that is a situation, um, another... A huge funeral that one will be so <clears throat> but anyway we'll see uh, just pray for the groom's family it, truly a tragedy that they're going through right now so and uh, so anyway some of the that's some of the things going on but I was reading in Genesis today and uh, we're in the, I, I'm towards the end of Genesis now 44 45 and and uh, was reading about Joseph and this is where he meets up with his brothers and <clears throat> don't want to go over the whole story, but it had gotten to the point where uh, he, he, he had told his brothers to go back home and he was going to keep uh, Benjamin with him. <clears throat> and uh, um, you, you just see a spark here <clears throat> of uh, goodness in Judah's life. And Judah comes to uh, Joseph not knowing who he is and but knowing what this is going to do to uh, his father. And uh, so he, he says to Joseph, he says, Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren. <clears throat> For how shall I go up to my father, and the lad be not with me, lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. And uh, just this is something that jumped out at me for me. 
decay. And so my devotions, I can get out of it whatever God gives me, right? And I'm just sharing with you uh, what that is. And so <clears throat> in... Uh, that's our washing machine. Just finished the cycle. So <clears throat> always something going on, right? But anyway, what I, what I got out of this is... Uh, uh, how how much do I love my father? And and I'm and I'm talking about my my heavenly father, okay? And uh, in, in this, <clears throat> Judah uh, wanting to uh, loved his father, and, and I mean Judah wasn't hadn't been the most moral kind of guy, and and had his own issues. We know that, but uh, here here we see that. Uh, he, he first of all he loved his brother he, he loved Benjamin but more so he loved his father and uh, <clears throat> wanted to protect his family and so it, it was just something that <clears throat> thought that jumped out in my mind uh, how much do I love my father and and how far am I willing to go to uh, please him and and uh, honor him uh, in my life and then I, I was reading in uh, Psalm 18 again and so Sometimes I don't even read a whole psalm. I, I just read parts of a psalm every day. But I, I read through the psalms twice a year and everything else once a year. And then on top of that, all my studies and all of that. So um, <clears throat> so in this uh, is, uh, sorry. All right. So Carol and Nelson are having trouble watching the video. I hope you guys are still on here. So. I'm just going to keep moving, and uh, I hope you guys, I hope it's working okay. So, but in Psalm 18, I, I saw here, um, I, I, and I just I just titled this for me, uh, Walk with Courage Today. And in Psalm 18, in verse 47 through 50, uh, here we see, It is God that avengeth me, and subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. And, you know, we just, we we need to walk in courage. And, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, sometimes being down a little bit or uh, even dealing with discouragement. You don't want to stay there. You want to take that to God and 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 uh, look to Him because you know you you look at our country and in the the immorality that's taken place and and it truly is sometimes very disheartening. But the the thing that we need to understand is everything here in this world changes and. And morality has obviously changed, and there's a lot of immorality, and there's a lot of turning their backs on God, but God doesn't change. God's word doesn't change. It's been this way since the day he wrote it and has preserved it for us, and, and we have it today. And, and, and so let's, let's live according to this and, and, and know the promises of God and know that they're true and just just don't get distracted. In Proverbs 4, I was reading this also, and, and in Proverbs 4, especially here towards the end of this, and I, I, verses 11 through 13, but we'll also see it again down here at the last part, verses 23 through 25, but I uh, won't read that today. But 11 through 13, <clears throat> we just need to stay focused and stay focused on the Word of God. And, and here, talking about wisdom and in the wisdom of his father. And he says, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. And and so here, uh, we, we need to do so. We, we need to live according to the word of God. I had a great time last night with Tyler and Thane. Uh, Teresa was at a meeting. And <clears throat> so Tyler came over and Thane was here. So we, the three of us went out to eat and had some, had a good discussion. And, and part of that discussion was, was living in a way that that uh, it brings honor and glory to God, but is not hypocritical. And, and how we we need to we we need to be transparent with our kids. We we need to let them know. Yes, there are times where we fail. We we need to allow our children to fail at times. We need to uh, help them and, and encourage them. And and 
We're, I'm not talking about overlooking sin, okay? But I am telling you that love covers a multitude of sins. And so don't, it, it, I think families sometimes lose their children because <clears throat> they put such a demand on their kids uh, to, to live a certain way in front of everybody. But what they see with their mom and dad at home is is just the opposite. And there's such a hypocritical spirit. And let's not have that. Let, let's not be that. Let's, let's uh, be what he says here. I've taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. And so let's live according to the wisdom of God. And, and, and here, continue to do that. And when thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her for she is thy life. Look, the, the word of God is our, is our lives. I mean, this is it. This is what we need to be obeying. This is what we need to be walking in. This is what we need to trust and by faith walk this way and, and know that, that God has these things uh, under control and trust what he says. I mean, it's just, it's the facts. And so, so yes, when we fail, we confess it to God. If we fail in front of our kids, we let them know we screwed up, you know, and, and, <clears throat> and we need to get it right. And so, you know, don't, don't be a hypocrite, okay? That, that's what I believe that, well, that's what I saw. And, and it was an encouragement to me in, in what, what I need to be doing and, and how I need to be living. And, and part of that is staying focused. And, and so often we, we lose our focus and then we go off onto some tangent and that's where we end up um, <clears throat> making a lot of bad decisions and, and not being what we need to be. And so uh, <clears throat> those were some of the things that I saw. And then, then I was reading also um, over here in John chapter 15. And this was in some of the devotions. And, and then it kind of ended up being more of a study for me <clears throat> and uh, just read one verse, and then it, you know, from there I started reading more and thinking about it. And and I want to end, <clears throat> I want to end with this in John fifteen, and uh, verse nine or verse ten. Uh, we'll start with verse ten and go through nineteen. Believe us. Uh, oh, fifteen. Sorry, I was. If you keep my commandments. You shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and, and abide in his love. And so, first of all, my obedience is important. And I need to obey what God says. And, and, and I need to keep his commandments. And, and when I'm keeping his commandments, I am, I am abiding. I, I am living in the very love of God, right? And so... I'm enjoying the love that he bestows upon me. I, I am enjoying by giving out this love uh, uh, to others. And, and, and I'll get to why, I'm, why I read this and why it's helped me today. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you, you know that it's 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 a, a sad thing that we see so many who hate our country uh, that hate each other, and and you know I I remember growing up in a time where we would come together at Thanksgiving and, and we'd have 60 people at our house and and it was great. I mean we had all kinds of family there, but. And in that family, we had those that were very conservative all the way to those that were were what I would say are very liberal and and I mean there would there would be some arguments sitting in there, and they would come and argue before dinner and then they'd sit down and argue some more after after dinner and we would eat together, pray together you know and and just had a good time. And even though they argued and they fought and they, they griped and they growled with each other, you know, you, you still loved each other and you just learned to disagree with each other. And, and, and today, and look, I know it's immoral today. I know that there's craziness in this world and there's some lunatics that are, that are running the asylum right now. I understand that, but we just, I can't, I cannot let them rob me 
of, of the love that, that God has shown to me. And, to, and, and I need to live in that. And I need to, I'm not going to overlook sin. And, I'm, and, I, and I have a responsibility to preach on, you know, the, the commandments of God and to live in the way that we should. But I, I still have to figure out a way to, to love my neighbor and to help each other and, and help, help someone see the light and, and see they need to trust Christ as their savior and greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You're my friends. If you do whatsoever, I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants for the ser servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I've made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that Whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. So here, you know, we, we still, we need to, we need to step up and, and we need to love the Lord enough that, that we are going to obey him and, and truly see the, the fruits of God in our lives. And, and I'm not going to have that if the only thing that I can think about is declaring war on all of those that, that disagree and, and, and really all of those that, Really, they have declared war on, on morality. They've declared war on Christianity. And, and I know that. And so, but I'm not big enough to stop it. But God is. And so I have to leave that to God and I have to do my responsibilities. Right now, my responsibilities are to love people enough to tell them about Christ and to walk in a way that bears fruit. And, and so, and know that, that that I, I'm a part of of that that chosen family that that God wants to use and and so and these things I command you that you love one another and and don't don't define love like the world defines love that we have to accept all of this lewd behavior that that's wrong okay that that's craziness and and that is lunacy and. And that is immoral and it's unbiblical. And so we need to love people enough to tell them that, look, if you don't repent and, and you realize you need a savior and, and call on Christ to be your savior, you're going to spend an eternity in hell. And, and we need to love people enough to tell them that and, and, and tell them that you're not going to find happiness in, in, in those things that you think that you are. And, and as a matter of fact, you, you need to get some help. And, and so, but we need to love them. And it says, if the world hate you, and it will, okay? We just know that. You know that it hated me before it hated you. It's okay. I, I mean, Christ walked on earth and they hated him. There were many that tried to kill him. And, and, and here we, we know that. And God's saying, don't be surprised at that. But it still doesn't give us a right to hate someone. And, and anyone. And, and look, I'm not preaching this to you, okay? I'm just sharing with you what I've been dealing with in my devotions for me. And if you've been dealing with the same things, then here it is. You know, we, he, he has commanded us that we love people and, and we love them enough to tell them the truth. And so, and we don't hide from that. And, and he goes through the rest of that chapter uh, uh, telling this, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. You know what? I, I guess if the world loves us, then what are we doing wrong? But if the world hates us, then, and, and, and we don't take it as a, I, I mean, let, let's make sure that they hate us for the right reasons, if that makes sense. All right. So, let, let's tell people about Christ. That, that's our marching orders for the day. Stay focused on him. How much do you love your father? That was my first question I had to myself. How much do I love my father? And then stay focused and, and accept the promises that he gives us like he did there in Psalm 18. And, and then here to love my father enough that I'm going to obey him, that I'm going to bear fruit even in a crazy world. And what, what better way to defeat the craziness of this 
them to win soul after soul after soul for Christ and, and see their hearts change and let them see the true light and be enlightened in their heart and in their mind to the truth of, of God's saving grace. So that's what we need. So anyway, that's what I have today. It's Friday. Uh, get to church somewhere on Sunday and, and enjoy the privilege that we have of meeting together and, and worshiping the Lord freely and, and hearing the word of God. And, and, uh, let's be in our, let's be in our place on Sunday and, uh, Lord willing, the creek don't rise. We'll be back on here Monday and, uh, God bless you guys and have a wonderful day today and have a wonderful weekend.